Thanks again for coming to the Tiny Company. Basically, what I will show you today is everything that Tiny Cat has to offer. I will give you a brief of what Tiny Cat is and what library thing is and how the two systems work together if you're new to library. And then I will take you through the whole front end of Tiny Cat. Uh, we'll look at the home page search page and a detail page or book page and then we'll dive into the admin portal on the back end and i will show you everything that you've got there for managing your tiny cat any questions while i'm presenting feel free to unmute yourself paula or you can just in the enter them in the chat and i will stop as i can to answer your questions so to get started what is library thing and tiny cat so library thing is sort of like the ils for your tiny cat or the integrated library system it's always going to be the side of things where you're actually cataloging and editing the records within your library tiny cat is what sits on top of your library thing catalog and it turns it into this wonderful little online public access catalog that we have here you should be able to to see Folio Seattle Athenians homepage here that I am showing. Tiny Cat has the features that you want for tracking your circulation and your patron data, and it's also where your visitors and patrons are actually able to go and search for books that they might want to check out. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the tour. Um, so starting at the top of our homepage here. A space for your company's logo or your library's logo. Beneath that, you can include your library's name. Of course, Folio doesn't need that here. And then there is a custom welcome message that you can include as well if you'd like. And beneath that, we've got the nice prominent search bar. There are two different searches that you can do on Tiny Cat. So you can do a basic search, uh, which is always going to show up on your, your Tiny Cat pages. Do an advanced search by clicking the little carrot icon to the right here. And I will show you what both of those look like in a few minutes. Uh, refreshing the page here just for a moment. There we go. Scrolling through on the home page, we have our animated cover display. And that just gives a little bit of eye candy to the page. It also lets patrons and visitors able to see uh, either recently added items or random items from your library, whichever you want, uh, how you want the display to show. And they're actually able to hover over a cover if they want to see the full title or click through to that book page. Below the cover display, you'll see that there is further content that you can add to your homepage. Um, above the cover display, a lot of libraries usually um, add links to highlighted collections or other searches within their tiny cat that they might want to highlight for visitors and patrons uh, things like tags that you've added to your books or something like that uh, folio here has has added links to saved searches for a bunch of tags that they have um, they've added their own subjects and so you can essentially browse by subject by using those links beneath the cover display there is further space where you can add Things like your, your contact information, your operation hours. Uh, you can even embed your, your Twitter feed, for example. Um, anything that you might want, this is all customizable. Let's go ahead and run a search in Tiny Cat so you can see what the search pages look like. I'm going to actually dive into my own Tiny Cat since I sort of know where everything is. And we can run a search for science. Running this search, uh, at the top left, you can see I've got the number of search results here. If there's multiple pages of search results, I'll be able to tab through them in the middle. At the top right, you can actually sort your searches. Search pages are always sorted by relevancy by default on TinyCap, but you can also sort your searches by acquisition, by title, publication date, author, and also popularity, which is calculated by library thing. You'll see that if I sort by popularity here, I've got Harry Potter showing up at the top, Handmaid's Tale, Hitchhiker's Guide, that all makes sense. Those are pretty popular items. 
side of your page, we've got search facets or search filters showing. And this just enables your visitors and patrons to be able to hone their searches even more. So they're able to very quickly find what they need. So I ran a search for science. If I also wanted to search, uh, filter that by, let's say, fantasy genre, I could click that. Narrowed my search down to 21 items and I can I can go even further if I want. I can click more than one facet. I can deselect it if I'd like, however I want to use those. So there are six different facets that you can add to your search pages. Those include format or media type, collections uh, that you've organized your, your records into, tags that you've added to your records, genre, which are calculated by library thing, language, and then there's also a facet for original language. I have excluded that from my search page. As far as content that you can include for items uh, on your search pages, I have pretty much everything you can include here on the left side of my page here. Those include tags, collections, series information, fields and call numbers, availability status, and then there's these three action buttons here. Uh, the place hold check out and ask about this i will show you what those do on the detail page we've got a little bit of eye candy with the book covers again and beneath that you'll see we've got two different icons beneath the book covers there is an email icon where you can actually email uh, information for a record uh, to yourself or say a research partner anybody that you might need to to email that information to and then there is a star icon. This is for building a starred list in your tiny cat. I'm going to go ahead and select a couple here to start building my starred list. Um, starred lists are really great for things like reading lists or research projects, really basically anything that you might want to get a list of items built in the catalog. Uh, up the top right, you'll see that it's tallying up how many starred items I have in the list. That's seven now. Uh, once I've done all of my searching and starring and I'm ready to view my starred list, I can actually click to the top right star here. And it's going to show my seven items that I've got. I can scroll through and look at those here. And then if I use the email icon at the top of the page, I can actually email that entire list to myself or my research partner or whoever I might need all session based on TinyCat. So with each new browser session, this list will clear for you. Going back to my search page here. Um, for advanced search, you go to the top right again. So we've got the, the little carrot icon to the right of the search bar. You can get to your advanced search page here. Search for a bunch of different fields here. We have Boolean search logic or and or search syntax, so you can search for multiple fields at once. And then you can also limit your advanced searches by collection, by language, and also by media type. This is a great way to sort of get your, your highlighted searches that you might want to include on your home page. But just to briefly show you what that looks like. Any questions so far on the searches that I have gone through, or even the, the home page, if you have questions about that. Let's move on. Uh, we'll go ahead and click through to a book page. Harry Potter is a good one. Okay. So this is my book page or detail page in my tiny cat. I love detail pages in tiny cat because there's so many different data fields that you can add or remove to or from these pages. So you can definitely really customize the look and feel of your tiny cat here. Just some of the highlighted fields that you can include. We've got Library of Congress subject headings available, ratings and book awards that the book has been listed on, on library thing. We have published media reviews, librarian vetted user reviews, uh, and we have over 2 million members on library things, so there's a lot of data to pull from here. And then we also have one of my favorites, the similar in this library. Uh, these are basically book recommendations. Uh, again, because we have so much data to pull from, we have some of the 
highest quality recommendations around. And this feature will show your, your visitors and patrons similar items that you've got uh, that they might also like. Up to the top of the page, you can see that we've still got the email icon and the start icon showing uh, underneath the book covers. Uh, but we also have social media icons that you can include so that folks are able to share books on their social media channels if they want. I did mention I would go over the action buttons here for you. Uh, so the place hold, check out, and ask about this button. Um, the place hold and check out, those function in the same way, um, except, um, you know, one of them is where you can allow your patrons to place a hold on a book. And then the other one, you can allow your patrons to check out a book for themselves if they want. Um, so if I was to do that, I would have to be a patron in the system. And I will show you what that looks like in the admin portal, how you can add your patrons. If I'm ready to go ahead and check a book out, all I can do is just click check out. And then it's going to prompt me to log in. So this, hey, what's the password? This means that I am in simple circulation mode. Cat offers two different types of patron accounts or circulation modes. Uh, the simple circulation is really great for high trust environments where you feel comfortable giving all patrons one shared password. So things like church libraries or small community groups, um, classroom libraries, anything like that. And then full circulation mode is where each patron would get their own login. And that's just a little bit of added security. But I'm going to go ahead and log in now, password. Once I've logged into the system, I get a pop-up where I can see all of the patrons here. And you can actually customize what patrons are able to see for this list. You can show full names, you can show just barcode numbers, uh, just first names, first name, last initial, whatever. So I'm just going to select the patron I'm going to check this book out to the checkout. Uh, the system's telling me that the book has been checked out. And as I can see, the availability status has been automatically refreshed. It's showing it's checked out. The place hold button is gone. The checkout button is gone. Uh, nobody else will be able to check this book out. And I also have it customized to show the due date. Uh, the ask about this feature is particularly useful even if you don't have self-checkout enabled. Anybody, whether they're a visitor or a patron, can use this button. And this just enables uh, folks to be able to reach out to you as the admin for any particular item they're interested in. So you've got an optional pop-up message at the top here. You can give them instructions for leaving information in the comment field if you want. Uh, otherwise, they can just fill in their name and email address comment if they'd like. So maybe say, I want to check this out, submit, and my request has been sent to the library admin's email and they'll be able to reach back out to me with my request. So it's very, very simple. Uh, any questions on, we've gone over for the detail page, the, the self-checkout or ask about this or anything? Nope, I'm good. Making this easy, okay. That is the whole front end, pretty much. Uh, so I think we're ready to go ahead and dive into the admin portal. So when you're ready to log into your admin portal, you should see this little lock icon at the bottom right of your tiny cat. Um, it's never going to go anywhere, no matter what page I'm going to. And you can go ahead and click and log, log in there. Uh, if you're logged in, we will still show that for you. It'll just look like a little house. And if you go away for 15 minutes, we'll auto log you out just as a security feature. Um, so yeah, so the little house shows me that I'm still logged in. That's good. Uh, once you're in your admin portal, you've got access to everything that you need for managing your tiny cat. We have a link back to your catalog homepage, all of your settings pages where you're customizing the look and function of your tiny cat, page where you can check multiple items in or out as the admin. We do keep a record of your transactions history. Your patrons page is where you're going to do anything with your patron data, add patrons, edit them, delete them, import, whatever you need. Your billing page is where you're managing your tiny cat subscription. Library thing page, I'm going to actually open this up in another tab. 
This is useful if you are new to library thing and you just want access to whatever you need for your tiny cats. So we have all of the pages that you might need for actually cataloging your books that are on library thing, any help pages or help guides that we have for you. And we have other links, uh, like a link to our store if you wanted to buy barcode labels or something like that. So that is a good page. And then the help terms page, this is just a direct link to our tiny cat help wiki. I'm going to actually go ahead and post that in the chat since that is a good link. Um, that'll also be in my, my follow up email with you. Uh, we've written help pages on pretty much everything in your admin portal here and more. So, you know, if you want a help page for your patrons, even so we can show them how to run a search or how to check out an item for themselves. Um, those are all right there in the help wiki. Of course, if you can't find the answer to your question, you can always email us and then we've got our email listed right here. So on your admin portal, we've just got a little shortcut here that shows you how many records you have in your tiny cat, how many items are currently checked out, etc. And you can actually click through to view those directly if you'd like. Let's go ahead and dive into our settings first. We've got a lot of different settings pages here on the left. So I'm not going to go into great detail for each one. I'll sort of give a, a one sentence summary if I'm able to. And if you have specific questions on a settings page, just feel free to stop me. Your first page is your basic settings. This is where you can actually view your account type, volunteer or paid staff. This is my test account, so I've got a free, free lifetime here. Uh, you can change your library's name and you can decide which collections you actually want to include from library thing. Content settings is where you can decide what type of book covers you want displayed, what genres and collection labels to show within your catalog, and if you happen to know JavaScript or you have a team member that knows JavaScript, you can actually add custom JavaScript to every catalog page in your tiny cat. Just to give you an example of what that might look like, we have the Center for Ancient Mediterranean and Near Eastern Studies library here. They use TinyCat. They have built this wonderful little reservation and appointment form using the custom JavaScript feature. And so that'll show up on every page in their TinyCat and folks are able to fill that out. Your homepage settings, pretty self-explanatory, customizing your homepage. You've got your logo, library name, any links or text you want to include on the page, and of course, how you want your cover display. Page settings is where you decide what fields you actually want to be searched by patrons and what they're able to see as far as item data or search facets. Retail page settings is where you can customize that ask about this feature that we went over. You can even just include it as a link at the bottom of your page and include links to library thing or Amazon, and you can customize your sharing buttons. Page sections, uh, pretty self-explanatory here as well. Uh, this is where you just drag and drop all of the fields that you want to include on your page. We have two visual spacers available, so you can have up to three different sections on your detail pages. If you want to remove a field, you just click the X to the right of that field and we'll bump it down into your inactive fields area. If you want to add a field to your detail page, just click the up arrow. We will add that field to the bottom of your detail page and then you can just drag and drop wherever you want that field to live. In settings is where you're going to decide how you want your patron names to be entered and displayed and where you um, can decide which patron fields to actually use. So you can add custom patron fields if you need. And the ones that are custom will actually be able to be edited or deleted entirely. So in case you have a typo or something like that, you can edit those as needed. Two custom fields here. Your patron account settings. Uh, this is if you want to allow your patrons to check out items for themselves, you're going to need to decide whether you want them to have simple circulation or full circulation. So we already went over simple circulation where all of the patrons share one common password. 
for high trust environments. And then full circulation, if you were to select that, each patron would get their own login and then you could set their login settings here. Show you what that would look like on the front end. Full circulation mode here because I've got a little person icon showing up at the top right. And then all I would have to do to log in as a patron, uh, just enter my barcode. I have my settings as login with barcode ID only. And then up from there, I can actually view my current and historical borrowing. I can view all of my personal information. Uh, you can actually customize what they're able to see and or edit. And so I can update everything that I need here as needed. And then I can also log back out when I'm done. Circulation settings is where you're going to decide um, which patron actions or admin actions you want. Uh, you can set your default circulation period, your call number system, all of that is right here. Contact info settings. This is primarily for library things used. We do require a name and an email, but other than that, you can pretty much fill in whatever you'd like. Uh, we just want to make sure that uh, if your account gets disabled, that you didn't need help with anything. Or, or anything. Any questions on the settings pages that I've gone over? The check in and out page next. Yeah, quick question. Um, actually, sort of related. So you have the two different circulation modes, and I'm a I'm a, a synagogue library. So you know, on the one hand, um, the simple password seems to seems like it would probably work well for us. So I I kind of have to figure out you know, how to disseminate that password in a safe manner. Um, exactly, yeah. But my, my other question is, if we, if we went with full, um, you said that, that we can sort of customize how they check it out, and you, the one you, you showed had, um, they would type in their barcode name. Can they just type in their name? Is that an option? Um, or is it so the like barcode? Yeah, it's only by barcode because uh, I mean, technically we have to make this work for everybody. So with some libraries, there might be two John Smiths, for example. Oh, that, that makes, I mean, even in our library, we have people with similar names. Okay, yeah. I just have to figure out a good sort of secure way to disseminate a single. The last thing my people are gonna want is to have to remember a, you know, a barcode number and password. That's just so not gonna work. <laughs> said if you uh if you don't have if you don't already have like patron barcodes or something you can create your own barcodes and those can be alphanumerical uh values so you could um custom enter you know your your barcode data as you know their name um as long as it's just all one it's all one word but you could have like their name and maybe whatever you know their birth date or something like that month or you know whatever whatever you've got you can oh, okay that makes some sense yeah. i think i like the simple but i mean right now well i'll get there but okay thank you that answers that question absolutely sure uh any other questions or not yet all right uh let's go ahead into the the check in and out page and you can see how you would check multiple items in or out uh, so here's here's the page. Uh, it's pretty simple. So basically, you're you're building your item list. You've got a stack of books that you want to check out, uh, and you're going to go ahead and start entering them in. From the the search box here, you can actually scan your books in. If you've got barcode labels or if you have ISBN barcodes on your books, you can scan them to add them to your item list. You can also manually search um, by typing those numbers in, or you can search by title, author whatever you need just to get your item list built. So testing this out, let's go ahead and enter barcodes uh, 61 and 98. Do 100 since I know that's going to bring back more than one result. If you get a search result uh, with, with more than one book, you can just simply click the book that you need. and You're good to go. Default status is always checked out. You can mark the books as returned if you need that, uh, or you can add a custom lending status as you need. Uh, if a book is already checked out, we will show you a little alert to the right of the title here in red. We'll show you that it's checked out, and then we'll show you which patron has it checked out. Um, this is useful if you've got like multiple copies of books that uh, you can see who's got which copy. 
Then you're going to add the patron that you need to check these books out to. If you're using the barcode option, you can scan or enter their patron barcode. If you're using the patron option, you can enter their name or their email address, and we will find all of the matching accounts for that email. Uh, we do have a patron name autocomplete too, so if you just enter three characters of a name or an email address, we'll find all of the matching patrons for that. And then you can just click the patron that you need. Uh, the default date is always today. Uh, you can use the date selector if you need to change that. And then it's already auto filling in my default circulation period, which is 14 days, so that's good. Uh, ready to check those books out. I'm going to click save. It's confirming the save for me. If I use my shortcut here to look at my transactions page, those three books are now showing up at the top. And I can see who's checked that out, the day, and then the due date. Pretty simple. Um, so I did use my shortcut here to go to my check-in and out page uh, or transactions page, but if I just went all the way back to my admin portal and clicked transactions, I would land on the same spot. So that's just a little shortcut for you. Uh, good transitions to this page, actually, because um, from your transactions, you will always look at your active transactions first. Um, and we'll keep all of your history for you. If you want to see all of your lending history, you can click all and we will show you books that have been returned or otherwise closed. If you look at your transactions by title, this is not sorting alphabetically by title, but rather it is clustering up the lending history for each title that you have in your library. So you can see, uh, you know, if an item is particularly popular or something like that. Um, and as you can see, yeah, book has been checked out multiple times. I can see the history and these pages are always sorted by most recent date first. And then also by statuses, you can view your specific lending statuses. If you just wanted to see your overdue books or those that are just um, maybe missing or whatever you might need, uh, you can view by specific status too. Each page you can see I've got this export transactions button. That is a fairly new feature that I'm very glad that we added. Uh, this enables you to sort of run your own circulation reports. Uh, TinyCut doesn't do automatic reporting yet. Um, that's something that I'm hoping we're going to be adding very soon. But in the meantime, you can export your history as you need and uh, look at all of your data there. Again, this page will just export your, your active transactions. This will do everything and so on and so forth. Questions on checking items in or out or transactions history? A question, can you, um, can you generate uh, overdue notices and such things? So we don't do, we don't send out automatic overdue notices or checkout reminders at this time. That is another feature that is very uh, at the top of my list that I'm hoping that we'll add soon. Uh, in the meantime, I do have a little trick for you to send out your own. Um, and I will show you what that looks like from the patrons page. I'll show that to you in a couple minutes. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, let's move along to the patrons page with that said. So your patrons, you're first going to land on all of your patrons at once and we tally them up for you. So I can see I've got 38 patrons in my system. Um, if you need to add patrons, you can add them one, one by one using the add patron button. Uh, you can import your patrons in batches with a CSV import. And it's a very simple process. I'm actually going to have a patron file. We're going to try this. Um, so you're just selecting your import file and uploading that. We will show you your mapping page, and then you can just simply drag and drop where you need each field to live, making sure they all match. And then when you're ready to import, you just click Submit. I'm not going to do that because this is just a, a test file that I had. And then we will very quickly import those patrons for you. Export your patrons from TinyCat, and we do have a full import export loop. So, if you wanted to run mass updates for your patrons, things like class lists or whatever you might need, uh, all you would need to do is export your patrons, 
update the CSV spreadsheet, whatever you might need. And as long as you're keeping the patron's name and the patron barcode the same, when you re-import that updated spreadsheet, we will update all of the existing patrons for you without creating duplicates. So that's a nice feature. Uh, under the more options, we've got, you can delete everything at once if you want. So if you're like me and you created a bunch of Harry Potter characters during your free trial and you wanted to delete everything before going live, you could certainly do that. Uh, do not worry if you accidentally click this button, you do have to confirm the request twice. So you can always click cancel. Editing existing patrons, you just use the pencil icon to the right of your patrons here. And you can edit and update as needed. At the bottom of the edit box, this is also going to be where you can delete your patrons and where you can merge your patrons. So if you do have duplicate patrons, you can merge the two and we will retain all of the lending history for both of them. Calculation mode, um, I don't know if you saw, but there is two login options. You can have them just log in with their barcode, or you can also require that they use a password as well. Um, so this little hash icon, this is going to be if you have them logging in with their barcode and a password. Um, using this button is going to be how you're actually generating a password for each patron. Um, I do have a request into developers to um, make this automated for the first time, at least for new patrons. Otherwise, you're going to have to generate a password for each patron as you go. Uh, so it can be time consuming if you want that added security and you have a lot of patrons. But that is how you would generate the password. Once you've got the password here, then you would pass it along in some secure manner, as you mentioned, you know, definitely not by email or something like that. But uh, that's how you would set your passwords. And then if they, for some reason, lost it, you could just generate a new one for them. Same method. Uh, as far as uh, I did mention, I would show you a trick for sending out your own overdue notices. Uh, so if you go to the fields page, you can actually customize your patron. Uh, you can look at your patrons however you want. We've got all of the patron fields in the system for you here. And you can drag and drop just like the detail pages. You can reorder your fields as you want. So what I recommend to folks who want to send out their own notices is adding the contact information here towards the bottom, whether you've got emails or phone numbers or whatever, um, and clicking save. And to the right here, we also show you current lending for patrons. So you can actually sort your patrons by overdue or checked out, and you can see which patrons have items checked out or overdue. And then from there, you can just copy and paste the email address or send out phone calls uh, for your notices as needed. Just a quick there. Uh, and again, I, I am hoping that we'll have notices sometime in the near future. I'm hoping in the next few months, but we'll see. Um, you can also view your patrons, uh, just your active patrons too. So you can see just who's got items currently checked out or overdue and stuff. Is your patrons page uh, anything that I didn't that I missed that you wanted to ask about patrons? No, I think I'm good on the patron side. Great, yeah. So that is all of Tiny Cat front to back. Um, so when you're actually ready, if you haven't signed up for a free trial yet, all you have to do is just go to librarycat.org. And there's a sign up button in the top right, and you can go through the setup wizard. If you're new to library thing and tiny cat, you can create both accounts at once right there. And we'll give you a free 30 day trial to test everything out. And um, um, I'll send you a follow up email too. So you can look at the help wiki. We've got pages that show you how to get started and, and where to go once you signed up um, and all of that. But Okay. Yeah, I'm a couple more quick questions, yeah. if I might. Absolutely. Um, so we've been using for you know a variety of different um, library cataloging and and circulation softwares for for a while, and I, I've been trying for a long time to find something that's a little friendlier. Um, is how I stumbled on on you guys, um, but I do have a a you know good size collection that's already cataloged. Um, can you can you guys um can I export and import into yes you can yeah. so let's go to library 
Um, so, um, and actually, if you go to your library thing page, so we've got mark imports and other imports available. So these oh, are I saw that when you were when you were zipping past that. I thought I saw that, but my screen is all fuzzy. Yeah. Yeah. So mark mark imports is definitely recommended. I mean, we can get yeah. most of your data from that. Um, but if you've got a file with ISBNs, um, that's uh, we will be able to get a bunch of data from from ISBNs too. And if you have non ISBN records, we've got an import for that as well. Pretty much right now, everything should be able to be, be exported and imported with the mark records, I would hope. And with the mark import, you can actually custom map a few fields. You can custom map your barcodes or call numbers and such. Um, so yeah, yeah, I would definitely, definitely go with the mark import. Okay. I know you showed, um, I think it's on this very page, to buy printed barcode labels. Do you have any, is there any mechanism to um, print out my own barcode labels or does it make more sense to buy them from you guys and then just them to the record and slap them on yeah so we don't have a, a built-in way for you to print your own in-house like in within library thing or tiny cat that's something i'm actually looking into because it, it, it shouldn't be that hard actually <laughs> I but you, uh, it's incredible yeah. <laughs> I've, been using, I've been using um library world for a few years now yeah yeah and they're they're good um things aren't incredibly user-friendly and the least user-friendly thing is the printing of the barcode labels yeah no, uh, i mean they they switched them a few years ago to make the make the um the application generate a pdf the idea that it generated a pdf and they could specify all of the uh, margins and the placement within the um label fields themselves everything would be fine and i gotta tell you i just cannot make it work in a <laughs> It just doesn't. Um, um, what about um, spine labels? We don't sell spine labels. That you would have to um, look into uh, your own. But you could just export your data from Library Thing or, or whatever system you've got. You export and do sort of a mail merge type of thing. So you can, uh, you know, use Avery labels or whatever you've got um, to, to mail merge and format them exactly how you want. Or it can be a CSV or, or Word or any of those. And we've got various export options available for you here. So we've got export as Excel, we've got TSV, um, export as MARC, whatever you might need. Um, and that, that should get you what you need. Okay. And then um, is there any sort of inventory function? There is. So if you go to your... I'm a little behind on taking inventory, yeah. but it needs to be go to your books and we've got a blog post i'm actually going to make a note here so i'm sending you a couple links i'll send you a couple links on the take inventory and then also the labels making your own because there's a, a talk thread where members discuss what they've done uh so if you go to done this in a while all right so if you go to the drop down menu and do take inventory go into the inventory mode and then you can just quickly scan your items as you're going through and it'll mark them as present um, and then any unmarked ones you can mark as absent by just clicking the circles and such um, and there, we've got instructions you can clear your inventory if you need whatever you might need. Good, good. yeah I desperately need to do that it's kind of it seems like a thing that would make a lot of sense for me when I you know if I switch over uh, you know, export everything, import it into library thing, and then do a yeah, what's missing. Yeah, make sure everything is matching up properly. Mm -hmm. uh, is the the thirty day trial? Is that are there limits on it at all? Um, no, it's a it's a free thirty day trial. You'll have access to everything uh, that you would if you had a paid Tiny Cat subscription. Um, you could theoretically, yeah. import my whole catalog. Yeah, and once you sign up for the free 30-day trial, um, because library thing is like a separate account, but linked, you know, TinyCat is dependent, like you can use library thing by itself. Uh, in order to use TinyCat, you have to have a library thing account because that's what it's based off of. Sign up for the free trial for TinyCat will give you a free lifetime membership to library thing. So you'll always have that. You can catalog as many books as you like on, on library thing. Um, Tiny Cat has the stipulation where we do have a 20,000 record limit. So 
Um, you know, it's built for small libraries, but you'll always have library thing. Even if you decide not to use TinyCat, you can you can keep your library thing. Yeah, we're only about 5,000 5, books. Yeah. Items, I should say, we have more than books. Yeah, but. yeah. Yep. All right, well, thank you so much. This has been really, really helpful because it's very hard to figure out just by like, you know, looking at your website and yeah that's why we do these uh, and then definitely you know we have we have people every week so just uh getting them to ask questions in a live setting i can actually show them uh, i'm much more a visual learner myself so i like being shown things rather than just reading through stuff so yeah i can look in you know as you're doing things and i can compare them mentally with how i've been doing them in library world and we had athena before that um <laughs> i'm going back a ways <laughs> yeah that's that's a while uh yeah. mm -hmm. well, it was, i mean we so needed to go cloud-based because i was really tired i'm the only librarian i'm volunteer i'm the only person who really knows where everything is and i was tired of getting every single phone call asking me where every item in the library was yeah no this should definitely bring <laughs> you into the 21st century yeah oh, yes library world got us there so now i want to you know kind yeah. of move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, yeah, if you if you come across questions, you know, after after this is all said and done, uh, you can always email me at uh, at tinycat at library thing. Enter that at library, and I'll I'll send you an email completely anyway, so you'll have it uh, at librarything.com. And I, I run all of the support for Tiny Cat, so I can answer any questions that you've got as you're going through and testing things out. And um, you know, if you find that you you need an extension on your free trial, you know, just, just shoot me an email and we can, we can work. Through. Thank you so much. And by the way, love the logo. I know, right? It's so cute. Uh, cats and books <laughs> and librarians. I mean, they, they're just hand in hand. It was kind of a no brainer. Uh, so I'm sitting here drinking my tea while, well, you know, at the same time, it does everything. Yeah. Else. We'll forward your comments along to our graphic designer, Chris Holland. I'm sure he would love to hear that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. All right. We'll talk soon. Have a good afternoon.